Hey guys, so a lot of you have been asking me about the specials, the long form shows that have the full menu attached. I love that format, but it does take a lot of time to pull off, and hopefully one day I will return to this format. But for now, I'm going to keep you guys hopefully happy with the mini menu. It's basically a main course and your side dishes for pulling off the perfect meal for most major holidays. And I can't think of a better holiday to kick this format off than with Christmas. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite Christmas dinners. It's a rosemary filet of beef served with a red wine gravy, mashed potatoes gratiné, and a roasted ratatouille. I love this menu. It is so delicious and it is so festive. And the best part is most of it can be made the day before. My kind of menu. So the day before, you're going to prep your mashed potatoes. Anytime I'm preparing a big meal like Christmas dinner, I always start with the most time-consuming recipe first. That way, as the day wears on and we all get tired and cranky, it'll be smooth sailing because you'll end up with the easiest menu items at the end of the day. Go ahead and peel three russet potatoes. You're going to cut them in half and then quarter them and throw them in a big pot of salted water to boil. That's boiling. We're going to multitask and we're going to prepare our ratatouille. So on a large sheet pan, you're going to just drizzle it with some olive oil. And then you're going to add some sliced onions. I like the little yellow onions because I think that they have a little bit more flavor than the white onions. Go ahead and line the onions all along the pan. And on top of that, you're going to add one eggplant that has been sliced. Then on top of the eggplant, you're going to add one yellow pepper, one red pepper, and one orange pepper. You're just going to lay them all on top of the eggplant, making sure that the entire tray is covered. Then we're going to take one zucchini and slice it into small coins and throw those on top. On top of that, we're going to add two cups of cherry tomatoes. So at this time of year, it can really be hard to find fresh, ripe tomatoes. So I really like to use the cherry tomatoes because I find out of season, they tend to be a little bit sweeter than the regular tomatoes. And then we're going to add two shallots that have been sliced and quartered. Now at this point, you might be thinking, wow, this looks like a lot of vegetables. And it is, but they will shrink down as they cook, so don't be concerned. And you're also going to add five garlic cloves. You can slice them in half and just sprinkle them around. That garlic will become so sweet and delicious, and it really adds a wonderful flavor to this ratatouille. Next, we're going to take some olive oil, about a quarter cup, and just drizzle it all over the vegetables, making sure we're getting into all the nooks and crannies. Then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, sprinkling it all over the top, and one tablespoon of herbs de Provence. If you can't find that, you could use some Italian seasoning or a little dried basil or oregano would also be good. Finally, we're going to add a little bit of fresh cracked pepper all over the top of the vegetables. Then you're going to take your tray and you're going to pop it in the oven at 450 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes. Now, the first 30 minutes, you don't want to touch that tray. You want those vegetables to kind of char on the bottom and get caramelized. Then, after the 30 minutes has passed, you can go in with your wooden spoon and just kind of give them a good toss. Break them up. You'll see that the tomatoes are probably bursting. The eggplant is wilting down. That's what you want. At this point, I'll tell you, it's going to look like a bit of a mess, and you're going to wonder, is this really going to come together in a beautiful roasted ratatouille? <laughs> Trust me, it is. So just stick with me. Go ahead with that wooden spoon and just keep tossing them and turning them, and in 50 minutes, you're going to end up with a fabulous looking ratatouille. I promise. Now at this point, we can return to our potatoes, which are probably fork tender by now. So go ahead and lift them out of your pot, and you want to transfer them into a bowl of an electric mixer, or just a bowl with a hand mixer would also work. You're going to add four tablespoons of butter, and then beat that up just until all that butter is melted and the potatoes are nice and fluffy. Add a cup of milk, and then season with two teaspoons of salt. Basically, the mashed potato part is done. You're going to transfer your mashed potatoes into that casserole dish and then cover it with a cup of grated Gruyere cheese. And then I also like to finish it with just a little bit of salt and pepper and paprika. And there you have it. One dish is done. So you're going to cover it with aluminum foil and pop it in the fridge. And it's all ready to go for tomorrow. 
Okay, so now we can prep our beef filet. I love a filet of beef for Christmas dinner. I think there's something so elegant and festive about it, but I will say this, it can be a little expensive. So one of the things that we do at our house is whoever's hosting Christmas dinner buys all the side dishes and the dessert and whatnot. And then whoever's coming chips in for the main course, whether that be a big turkey or a filet of beef. And then that way it's not so burdensome on the person who's doing all the work hosting the dinner. Seems to work out well at our house. You may try it this year at your house and let me know how it goes. So to prep it, all we have to do is just season liberally with some salt and pepper. Meat really likes to be well salted. It actually really helps tenderize it and bring out the flavor. So don't be shy. And we're also gonna add two tablespoons of freshly chopped rosemary. Just rub the rosemary all along the beef, getting on all the sides and the ends. And then you're gonna transfer your beef, cover it with some aluminum foil, and pop that in the fridge. Now we've got our second course prepped and ready to go. At this point, I bet your roasted ratatouille is ready. You can pull out your pan, you're going to transfer it to your casserole dish, and then just spread that ratatouille all along that dish. And that's all you have to do. You can cover it with foil and pop it in the fridge. Okay, so all of our dishes are prepped. They're in the refrigerator, we're ready to go. Here's how this is all gonna work on Christmas dinner. So about an hour before you're ready to eat, you're gonna go in your fridge, pull out your beef, and let it get to room temperature. You can let it sit on your counter just covered in tin foil. Now when it comes to choosing your roasting pan, you wanna make sure that it's a heavy duty pan that could actually also go on a cooktop because we are going to sear this beef before it goes into the oven. You just wanna make sure that that meat is nice and caramelized before it starts to roast. If your roasting pan does not go on a cooktop and not all of them do, that's okay. You could actually use a large skillet to sear your meat beforehand and then put it into your roasting pan. You're gonna add a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan and then wait until that pan gets really, really hot. You don't wanna put that beautiful piece of beef in a pan that's cold because it won't sear that way. So just be patient. And once it looks like that oil is nice and shimmery, you're going to then take your beef, put it in the pan and sear it on all sides. Now, if you're using a skillet to sear your beef, that's fine, but just hold on to that skillet. Don't let somebody take that skillet and put it in the dishwasher or try to wash it because you want to retain all those pan juices that that beef has actually created because this is what we're going to use to create our gravy. So just put it on the cooktop and tell everybody, do not touch. You're going to take your roasting pan. You're going to put it in the oven with your mashed potato casserole. You can keep the casserole covered for at least 20 minutes. At the 20 minute mark, you want to check your beef. Now at this point, it really does pay to have a meat thermometer. You've spent a lot of money on this beef and you don't want to undercook it or overcook it. There's nothing that can ruin a dinner faster. So a meat thermometer is your best friend when it comes to knowing when that meat is done. Once your meat is done, you can go ahead and pull it out, transfer your filet onto a cutting board and cover it with foil. Then you're gonna take your ratatouille and you're gonna pop that in the oven with your mashed potatoes. And at this point, you wanna remove the foil of the mashed potatoes so that that cheese can get nice and bubbly and gratiné. While our beef is resting and while our side dishes are heating up, we can make the pan gravy. First thing we're going to do is heat our pan, make sure it's nice and hot, and then we are going to deglaze it with some red wine. You're gonna take a wooden spoon and just remove all of those bits and brown parts at the bottom. There's wonderful flavor in that and you wanna make sure that you get every little inch of that up so that that can start to become the basis of your gravy. Then you're going to add two cups of beef broth and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I also like to add just a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce secret ingredient, and I really have to give my father credit for this one because he adds curry powder in all his gravies. It is the secret ingredient, everybody loves it, they never know exactly what it is, and just recently I wormed it out of him and he finally confessed, okay, it's a little curry powder. <laughs> so it wouldn't be Christmas dinner without a little curry powder in the gravy. And then you're also gonna add three sprigs of rosemary. This is a great thing to add to any hot gravy because as that gravy is warmed up, it's going to release all the oils in that rosemary and create a beautiful, delicious rosemary scented gravy. And at this point, it's important to let that gravy reduce down a bit. You're looking for that gravy to kind of reduce in volume about half. That way, all of those flavors will become really concentrated and very, very flavorful. I rarely will salt a gravy because there's a lot of sodium that's in the beef broth and the salt that was on the beef is now at the bottom of the pan. So rarely does it need salt, but taste it. And if you feel that it does, go ahead. 
but I will add some freshly cracked pepper. That's a great thing to add as a little finishing touch, as well as one tablespoon of butter. Wouldn't be the holidays without the butter, right? No, but the butter is really going to create a wonderful silky finish to our gravy. Then you can remove that rosemary sprig, transfer your gravy into a gravy boat, and set it aside. At this point, you can now carve your beef. So go ahead and slice it into about half inch slices, arrange it beautifully on a platter, and then the final thing I like to do is garnish my platter with a little bit of fresh rosemary. And your main course is done. Serve it alongside with your two side dishes, which at this point will also be done, and you will have one beautiful, festive Christmas dinner. I love this menu because there is such a wonderful combination of that elegant beef, those decadent mashed potatoes, and that sweet caramelized ratatouille. It is really the perfect Christmas dinner in my book. I hope you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. I think you'll be pretty impressed with how easy it is and how delicious it tastes. I'll see you guys back here next week when we are going to tackle one elegant, delicious dessert to end your Christmas dinner. I'll see you then. Bye. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light. Mm, yeah. Above the deep and dreamless sleep. The silence does go 